Suddenly Last Summer is the story of Violet Venable and her son Sebastian Venable who uh, live in New Orleans and they have a very close relationship with each other. Every year Violet Venable and her son go on these elaborate holidays with each other until one year Violet Venable's not well enough to go on this holiday and instead Sebastian takes his cousin Catherine Holly and whilst he's away on holiday, something terrible happens, something unspeakable happens, and he's murdered as a result of it. And only Catherine knows the full story. And as a result of witnessing the event, Catherine has apparently gone mad. And in a way, the play is consequently about the extent that people are, pre are prepared to go to in order to silence uncomfortable truths. Tennessee Williams is the type of artist who draws directly from his own existence. You can look at all of his plays and in a way his life and in particular his family are a kind of ensemble of players that he continually draws upon. A very obvious way in which Tennessee Williams' life is present in Suddenly Last Summer is that his sister had one of the earliest forms of lobotomy performed upon her and Tennessee Williams resented that. The idea of the formal conceit for this production hit me in a moment of inspiration when I had the very privileged experience of hearing a group of actors read this play aloud about a year before we started rehearsals. And it struck me at the moment when Catherine starts to tell her story and I just had this lightning bolt image of a screen that occupied the drama theatre proscenium and us zooming in on Catherine's face and just getting to her eyes and then zooming out and being transported from the garden into her nightmare memory. And when I read this play, I found that the further you fell into this heightened reality, the more it became a nightmare. The live video kind of starts in a way where it gives you this almost documentary sense of truth. As the play progresses and we revolve to reveal Catherine as she enters into the world of Violet Venable, we go from a single shot camera to multicam and the single perspective all of a sudden becomes a fractured multiple perspective take on things and the audience has to shift into a mode of experiencing more than one person's perspective on what might be true. And then by the time we reach the final third of the play, the camera has shifted from this sort of documentary style into a more heightened surrealist style of cinema. The moments when actors would walk through a door and be seen both on the screen and live in the theatre, um, the audience's perception of what world and what realm that character existed within was completely upended. And so this mechanism that initially we thought we could trust, the camera, has become something that's usurped our sense of reality and actually taken us into the surreal. And it's in this way that this theatrical um, implementation of live video matches Tennessee Williams' evolution of this idea of, of trust and what's true and this question of who can we trust. So the set that Alice Babbage and I conceived of for this production is very simple. A great white wall that occupied the proscenium of the stage on a revolve, behind which was a set of about 60 or 70 green trees that created Sebastian Venable's garden. Tennessee Williams takes painstaking detail in his description of Sebastian's garden and in a way it reflects Sebastian Venable's artistic work and it also reflects Sebastian Venable's inner life. He describes the garden as being like a jungle, but one that's meticulously kept. And in a way, it speaks to the tension within Sebastian Venable 
as an artist who very diligently um, worked upon his poems um, in an attempt to contain his animalistic urges within. Tennessee Williams is a sort of theatrical renegade of his time in that he was fascinated in pushing the form of theatre and the major way he was interested in doing that was introducing other art forms into, into the theatre and music is a key one. At the moments when we feel these characters getting close to revealing to us the kind of truthful inner turmoil, um, Williams often has music scoring those moments. This sort of speaks to the operatic, almost theatrically cinematic vision that Tennessee Williams has for his works. They sit in a heightened universe in a way in which, you know, we might find in, in opera or, or in cinema, the use of scoring takes us to an elevated emotional and psychological state. And he's intensely aware of the potency of music. You know, ultimately this play is about truth and it's about personal truth and it asks us to be accountable for what's truly within us and the way in which we express that in our lives. And through this play, Tennessee Williams shows us the deep tragedy of what happens to us when we don't take hold of that personal truth within us.